my name's Tony Commissar and I'm involved in the Shelter Plus Care program. Well, the backstory is a little bit of a long one. There were some chain events in my life that led me to uh, be homeless. I met some wonderful people along this path who introduced me to uh, resources that were available. I might get emotional um, because the, the process was uh, very difficult for me. I was a victim of sex trafficking for a long time. In 2017, um, I wanted to change my life. I wasn't happy and I didn't know how. During this time, I conceived my second son. And once I found out that I was pregnant, I knew that I needed to find a new way to live. And so what I did was I entered into a 12-step program and there they had rehabilitation housing. In those houses, um, I struggled to make ends meet and I was like really emotional. I didn't know how I was gonna afford to take care of my family. I had met women who had been in the same circumstance and who had found a way out. And so I was introduced to a woman named Amy Lee Hartz who has a program in Portland, in Louisville, Kentucky. I was about eight or nine months pregnant and I was gonna have my son any day and I just didn't know where to bring him. And so she got me into the uh, Salvation Army which has a shelter for women and children. And I remember being so grateful because my son was gonna be safe, like he was gonna have a home and I didn't have that stress anymore. So through that program, uh, I got introduced to the Shelter Plus Care. You know, they gave us budgeting classes and cooking classes and all of these um, resources that changed my life, you know. And then I found an apartment and I brought my baby home and all of this happened before he was, um, before he was like six months old. It was a real miracle. I tell my story so that people will know that like there is an other side, but to walk through it and try to hold your head high is one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my life. So looking back, would I have been able to do it? I think I would have gave my kid a good life and I think that I would have been able to succeed but there's no way that I would have found the peace and security that I have. So now we're gonna sign uh, papers to get on section eight from being, you know, self-sufficient and maintaining my bills and keeping my home, you know, up to date and everything. Now I get to take that and hopefully get a house for my son. Seeing how great it feels to help people. Um, I'm actually going to school to be a social worker. So I don't know what that looks like for me. I just know that because this is such a monumental thing, I wanna be a part of it forever, you know, so. My name is Kanita Powell. The program that I was with with RCS is MP Cares. I have completed my phlebotomy through MP Cares and they have a lot of different resources that they offer. You get to actually pick and choose what you want to do in the program. I will be a person who would draw blood and take samples from your blood to make sure that you don't have any high blood pressure, diabetes, or anything going on major with your immune system. It's a great program. I'm gonna always have a job in the medical field. I'm looking forward to taking care of my kids with it and not being broken down like I told you. Before you can even get in the program, you have to either be working towards a high school diploma or a GED. I chose to get my high school diploma. I wasn't that much away from it, so I just put myself to the test to see if I could do it, and it was no stopping. I got my high school diploma within two weeks of the program, and then I completed the phlebotomy program, so I'm just continuing to go, and I'm excited and thankful that y'all even called me to do this interview because it just makes me feel like I have accomplished so much, and I'm being recognized by somebody else other than, you know, me knowing my own accomplishments. So I'm thankful. I just told myself I was determined and I was gonna have it before this year, before the ending of this year. And I never stopped and I just earned every credit that I needed. I didn't have that many to earn, but just knowing that I went through to do everything that I had to do over, I really appreciate it. Because I feel like if, if they didn't offer me the opportunity, I don't think I would have pushed myself as hard. So I just feel like if I didn't have the help from you guys, I think I would've, 
it would have had to take some time for me to even go into phlebotomy. I would have finished the high school diploma part, but the phlebotomy, I think I still, it wouldn't have been as easy. Because when you have support, it makes you want to go get it more. Yeah. If you're by yourself, it's kind of hard, you know. And like I said, I have children, so I'm, I'm, I wasn't really focused on paying $900 to go to a course, because this 900 could be on my kids, you know, so. I'm thankful. I, I really think if without the course, I wouldn't have got the phlebotomy done. Take my opportunity and everything that I sat here and told you and look at me and be like, if she could do it, I can too. Because I ain't no different from nobody else. When you get that diploma, it's nothing like, can't nobody tell you you can't. Jermaine Austin. In the program, I'm through Metro, Housing, or Louisville. A lot of people can hate you just for being homeless because they feel what? You don't have nowhere to go. That's where all my abusement came from. Took money out of my pocket, cut my pockets off, had me out there looking like I wasn't worth nothing. And when I woke up and my pockets was gone, that was a sign that was telling me that it could have been my body cut up. Stand with people, it don't work. I done been through that too. That's how people get caught up, not knowing where the person got in their crib, not knowing what that person been out there doing on the street. Oh yeah, you come here, it's called, you in the wrong just as he is, cause you around it. And that's how a lot of my downfalls happen, being in the wrong place, wrong time. I separated myself. Cause see, you got your balance side, you got your side that, what, that falls. Some people will rather see you what? In the same boat as them. Sometimes you gotta change that. You gotta separate yourself and be a solo person until you feel yourself getting back up to where you feel you need to be at. I don't have no family. I ain't have nobody I can go knock on their door and say, hey man, let me sleep for a day or two here. Now I had to make resources and beat around it. And I talked to Tiny and I said, Miss Tiny, I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for y'all. And one day they came and they popped up at my tent and said, pack all your stuff up. We got an apartment for you. Yeah, I had my birth certificate stolen when I was on the street. I needed that is to move into my apartment. Instead, they overlooked it and said, man, no, we see you trying and somebody's stealing your stuff, that's not your fault. So we're gonna just go ahead and do this, but in the time being, we're gonna try to process it to try to get that going. That's your next thing. So I got my social security card, my ID, my birth certificate, the only thing I'm missing. And when they told me, they said, hey, if we get y'all up out of the park, if we willing to put you into an apartment, is you willing to wanna do that? I said, sure. I ain't looked back since. Oh, I was so happy. I had chills in my body. You gave me a crib, my goal is to try to keep it. Keep it, try to invest the next person. Yeah, man, ain't nothing like your own. RCS has been a blessing to me um, through the pandemic. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but just thinking about the assistance and the help and everything, the blessings that um, I've actually received, my family has received. I actually sacrificed working for my daughter going back to school. So she didn't want to go back to school during the pandemic. When they opened schools back up, it was kind of new to all of us, especially children. And she was one of the ones that got sick during the pandemic. So the fear was still there and I had to make a decision. We took on the responsibility and months rolled by and then you know we started to have the lack and the struggle in the home. I reached back out and I went through my emails and I did what I needed to do and making the connections led me to RCS. And so when I applied for the grant, I think it's what they called it at the time, a grant, I knew that everyone was struggling. So I didn't really count on it and I just kind of just waited to hear back from them. But in the, in the meantime, and in between time, uh, my children and I, we formed an idea to start our own business. And the idea came from all the sadness and wanting to give back something different to the community and add something to the community other than sadness. So we wanted to bring some smiles. And so I said, what makes people smile? And the girl said, balloons make people smile. And I said, you know what? We should start our own balloon service. And so we did. We started our own balloon service, one, two, three balloons. And again, it came from the struggle. There were so many different organizations that was offering assistance, but the most consistent one that I know of was the RCS, and it just, it helped me tremendously with everything from just being able to get through day to day, a simple gas card, a program uh, that I could attend that taught me savings, that I could go back home and teach my children the power of saving. So now, 
instead of spending a dollar all the time, they like to save. I love to see their wheels turning and, and to see them really actively engage in dropping the dollar in the piggy bank. That is what just brightens my day. So they really have empowered me. And as I'm getting empowered through the programs that I'm reaching out to and that I'm being empowered by, I'm able to really just stay motivated because I don't know, without, without so much of the programs and so much of the assistance that I've received, I don't know, I think I would have spiraled even more than the pandemic was already having uh, people like myself spiral, you know, and when I say people like myself, uh, I say low-income people, uh, people of no income. It's all been connected to the Metro government and the resources and the my financial coach staying connected with me and keeping me connected with what really is helping me thrive. I, I know without this program, I would have gave up. I, I definitely would have gave up because this is a lot like to try to run a business in the midst of, you know, kind of like a broke down situation because the community, we were all broke down, you know, and just just trying to see our way through the pandemic and RCS really has helped me stay focused on what matters, which is giving back because even when you don't have, you, when you think you don't have anything to give, I learned that you, you can give yourself, you can give your time, you can give your knowledge. So. People in the community have given me that and I've soaked it up like a sponge and I'm just, I just want to give it back. RCS is all about removing stumbling blocks. It's all about removing barriers. And I don't know if people know that, but I learned that. So I just want to shout it out and let someone know that that's what RCS is all about. Helping you with those barriers. We all have them, but it's like, how do I overcome them? How do I get past them? Or do I let them swallow me whole? So it's like, RCS is all about not giving up, sustainability, motivating you, staying motivated, and connecting you to the resources that you need to be connected to. But they want to make sure that you understand that it's going to be work. And you've got to be motivated. You've got to be consistent. You've also got to be dedicated to doing the work. If you're dedicated to doing the work, RCS will be behind you 100%. My name is Betty Rhodes. I was homeless. I didn't have nowhere to go. I was going from Wayside whenever they could let everybody in. They were so full. And uh, to, uh, I used to go up there and they would call coalition for me to give me a bed. And sometimes it wasn't pleasant having to sit outside. I stay up all night sitting outside on the bus stop. So I saw curling up there one day and I said, excuse me, who are you? And she introduced herself as a a, a worker from Well Springs. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm up here for housing, because they had uh, housing appointments and stuff, too, for people that was homeless. She came back and met with me, like she said, and she told me about uh, Section A housing. She sat me up for Section A, and I got it two weeks later. I told her I was already at seven counties, and she, I said, but I would like to switch over to Wellsprings. So she got that together for me. It's, something just told me, stay over at Phoenix and let them know how my situation was going. I was working with housing. And there go Curl and Jolly, she come through there. And uh, the program helps me tremendously. Uh, everything's going swell, and I'm keeping my doctor's appointments. <laughs> I work with Wellsprings through psychiatry, too. My, my, I'm schizophrenia, and then have a lot of anxiety sometimes, and sometimes I won't. You know, I was just thinking that, that the other day, if I didn't have curling uh, helping me along the way, uh, uh, making sure that I see a psychiatrist, uh, you know, I don't. I I think it would really be awful. You know, she takes me to, uh, to get special needs when I need to go shopping and stuff. And any events they have, uh, she said I was welcome to go. I can't understand certain stuff. She helps me understand it. Section A won't meet with me. Uh, curl and make sure I get, uh, I get a ride there and stuff. And I just go outside and walk sometimes and sit out on the porch and uh, look at uh, TV. Just thankful and glad not to be homeless. 
My name is Christopher James Fox. Well, when I came in contact with uh, Well Springs, I was staying at St. Vincent de Paul. I was homeless, just depressed, suicidal, just all kind of garbage. Had to wake up depressed every day. It's just no way to live. And then I met Well Springs. They asked me something about how I was doing that day. If I felt, I can't remember how they asked me. But I said, yeah, I'd like to meet some some people. And come to find out, Will Springs was one of, the, one of the best people I met. We got together a few times and talked. It's just the more I got to know them, the more I opened up to them and, and just realized that they were good people. They were here to help me. And they slowly but surely I don't know how they did it, but they got me out of this depression stuff and stuff. I'm, I'm fine now, pretty much. I'm, I still get a little depressed, but not like I did. We got connected to uh, get my disability done. Um, they sat with me for hours over that stuff, and then when I finally got it. When they got me an apartment, it just they made me feel great. It made me feel like I was getting some independence back. I mean, it just, it helps in so many ways. You got your own, you feel safe because you got your walls around you, you got a door that locks. You're not on the street anymore, or I'm not on the street anymore. Um, that's just huge. I thank God every time I walk in that door. There's just so much, so much I could do. I mean, I would even like to go back to school if that's ever possible. It means so much nowadays where, where before I may have took a shower for granted or something and now I thank God I can take a shower. My name is Elandra Johnson and I work at Elder Thurber at uh, Nutrition. We give out the box lunches and it's just more than just giving out the box lunches because most of the time when people see a box they think well, we're getting a bologna sandwich. And they kind of shy away from that. But I always like to tell them, this is not a bologna sandwich in here. When you open up this box, it's a pretty big box in there. And you're getting an awful lot of food in here. But only thing, the thing about the food, what I like, is healthy food. Everything that you're getting in this box is healthy. Ain't nothing in this box gonna run your sugar up or either your blood pressure. It's not going to run it up. And it's awful a lot of food. And you say, you see all this food, you say, oh, wow, it's going to fill you up. You're getting, like, uh, all different types of salads in this box, salad that I have never heard of, I've never seen. But it's good. You're getting a uh, homemade soup. It's delicious. I'm trying to lick the foam, <laughs> trying to get all the little juices out of it. it. It's very good. And I always tell people, it's not about the money. They don't care about what you make, because sometimes, you know, when you pay your bills, you, you get your medicine, you don't have time, you don't really have time uh, to make uh, a decent lunch. Well, Metro is giving you a healthy lunch. You don't have to worry about that. And you're gonna get your right nutrition. I'm losing weight eating these here, because once I eat these here, uh, my right amount uh, food for lunch and it's healthy, I think about dinner. I said, I ate right for lunch. Now, what I'm going to do about dinner? I am automatically know I'm going to eat healthy for dinner because I ate healthy for lunch. And by eating this, you don't have a health. You, you're not hungry. You're not really hungry. You want something light. And that could be like a small salad or a half of a sandwich. And then when uh, breakfast comes, you done had a good lunch, you had a good dinner, and when you wake up in the morning, you see breakfast, you're like, you're going to have a light breakfast because you look in there, okay, everything in this box is healthy. It's everything in this box is healthy and I'm losing weight. Okay, that gives me motivation to do things. And then at the center, if you're getting a, a healthy lunch, they got a program there at the center for wellness. So it's good to get in the wellness program before the exercise, like the arthritis exercise. That helps you lose weight and motivate you.
get your energy up and your heart rate up, and then you ready for your boss lunch. <laughs> when you get through, you ready for your boss lunch. We do the out body exercise, we do yoga. We all about fitness. We do arc and craft. They do quilting, they do line dancing. They do a lot of things. It keeps you moving. And it also keep you out of the house because sometimes you could, you know, you could be at home and you can get so depressed because there's nothing to do. But when you go to the senior center, you got something to do. Then you're meeting people. If I didn't have a center to go to, I would be in my house. I would be depressed. And some, and we, most of us have arthritis. And uh, by us being in the house and not going to these activities, that just make our health worse. Because uh, I need to move my limbs. At the center, I'm exercising. I'm moving my limb. If so I'm at home, it's just like, uh, the other word, somebody just gave me a rocket chair and tell me to sit in there till I die. But at the center, Ain't nobody gave me no rocket chair. They said, okay, we the golden girls. <laughs> we gonna get up and dance. <laughs> and we do that. And we have fun. We smiling. Find out where these centers at. And go. Go to these centers. You will enjoy it. I mean, it will just lift your spirit up. You, will, you won't feel depressed. You won't feel down or anything. Go and get your boss lunch. You will love it. It's not a peanut butter and jelly in there. <laughs> Go and get your boss lunch. You will love them. They delicious. And whoever do them, they doing a great job. Mm, delicious. I love them. <laughs> I love them. Hello, my name is Lakeisha Cathy. I benefited from the rental assistance program through Neighborhood Place when I myself caught COVID-19 and didn't know what I was gonna do next. It was very, very beneficial to me and a stress reliever for me knowing that I was as sick as I was and my housing for me and my daughter was gonna be covered. I was working, um, caught COVID so bad that I was off work. I didn't know what I was gonna do next. I heard about the neighborhood place through my landlord. So she referred me to churches and the neighborhood place. The neighborhood place was all on it. My landlord did most of the work for me because I was so sick. Got me with the awesome case worker. She's been there for me for at least the last year. So just walking me through everything, each time making it easy for me, I'm finally better. I had one of the cases where COVID was long-term COVID negative tests, but long-term um, side effects. So I'm not 100%, but I am better. Neighborhood Place has just been so beneficial to me. Like I said, just always knowing you have a, I'm gonna have a roof over my head, and they provided that for me. Thank God that it was available, and that thank God that it went as long as it did. It wasn't just one time and you're done. I'm currently just trying to bounce back, bounce my life back. Uh, my daughter does go to private school, so just trying to get everything back on track for us and so that we can get back to the life that we were used to. The one thing I felt like from my community, from the leadership of our community, is they put us first. Every day we got updates, we was on the news, but no matter what, we were first. I, having COVID is hard enough. But then, I'm sorry, I'm Greg Ryan. But um, to know that you just have so much support from your community, from your leadership, from people that I probably never meet, and I'm okay with that, but to know that they just had my back. If I needed food, the health department, they sent food every day. They sent supplies. So just to know that you have that in your community is just so uplifting and encouraging. Of course, I felt relieved. When I knew I was gonna get the rental assistance, I felt relieved. Um, like I said, to already have COVID and to have it as bad as I did where I couldn't even walk, I had to crawl to the bathroom. And then to know that that was one thing off of me. 
is to worry about a roof over my me and my daughter's head that was relief enough. I did tell people to reach out. They were, they're going to turn me down. I'm like, no, reach out, reach out. And I promise you'll get a yes before you get a no.